Just recently, I posted a video from my trip out to Cape Cod. It was a very short 18 hours of taking a ton of photos of a ton of different light, and I was really happy with some of the results. Today, I wanna to try a new format on the channel that I hope to do whenever I make photos in a video like this going forward. Photos that I care about, that I think are slightly interesting that I might use for a project in the future. And what I wanna do is just critique them and go over them, talk about what works, what didn't work, talk about sequencing them, where I could use them in the future. And I think all of this is really a big part of the photography process itself, maybe even as much, if not more, as going out and actually just taking the pictures because what you do with them and where they end up is equally important and ultimately how people will see them. My plan for this video is to contact print all of the photos from Cape Cod. I'm gonna show you some final prints as well. Then we're gonna look at the contact sheets together, talk about what worked and what didn't work. Um, then maybe make a sequence out of the images and just talk a little bit about them. Yeah, let's get to it. I have my contact sheets ready here. They're looking awesome. I printed some final images as well. Obviously not a whole body of work is gonna be shot in 18 hours here, but yeah, I think there was some cool stuff. First contact sheet here, just a lot of water. Um, this was when I first got to Cape Cod and it was super cloudy and I really thought that we were not gonna get anything interesting on this evening and that's the wrong attitude to have but um you know sometimes you just can't help but feel that way so i started just taking these photos of the water here we walked out onto the sandbar behind some cabins that we parked at and slowly you can kind of see how it goes from very gray to the sky opening up a little bit and then here you can see the very first little peak of light happening which I like. You can't quite see the sun yet but you can see the sun reflecting off the water which I like and then just facing the opposite way was this really stormy sky so when this started to happen when you get kind of this duality in one place um, it's gonna be an interesting sunset I think. I started to shoot this sort of sandbar I really like that it seemed like a couple people were starting to walk out as the sun was setting and it really seemed like that was part of like the community there was going out to actually just watch the sky. And I think this is the first photo from the trip that I actually printed. I think what I liked about it was the people standing out here. They kind of look like they're standing in the water, but then it was just all these little tiny puddles, these little shapes of water the sky's looking really interesting. There's this super interesting hue of red starting to happen from the light kind of coming through the clouds. And yeah, that was the first print. Right after that, um, you can see the sky got a whole lot more interesting here. The sun really came through, just poked under that cloud as opposed to before. Here you can really see that difference. So this is before the sun pokes through and this is with the sun directly in the frame and I actually love getting the sun directly in the frame I think especially with the darkroom printing you can just make the print so dark that it, it kind of works and it's just this beautiful little line of light I, I took a portrait here which I don't usually do but I just loved his hat and he was such a sweet looking man that I had to take a photo and I, I like how it turned out. And then I think this was my favorite image of the night here. And I did make a full print of this, which I think turned out really nice. Just beautiful texture in the sky, beautiful texture in the ripples of the water here. Um, then you have these tiny little puddles down here might be kind of hard to see there's some people out in the water some birds in the water like just a perfect kind of scene 
and I think this sandbar here really adds a nice element to the foreground. I think the sandbar in both of these images is what really makes it work because it just adds that little element of context and it's no longer just a sunset photo. It's about this space where people can stand and walk out and I don't know, enjoy life. So yeah, really happy with this one. I did print this vertical shot too. I just really like the texture of the water, but you can see this shot is just nowhere near as interesting as the one with the sandbar here. Let's go to the next contact sheet, which is kind of more of the same, but then as we're kind of walking away from that sandbar, there's this scene right here, uh, which is literally 10 feet away, but in that time, you can see the sky has changed completely from this glowing red to this dark blue. And it's a completely different feeling, literally like two minutes later. I don't know how long it was, but I think it just goes to show how much there actually is like a moment when it comes to shooting landscape photos. These are two totally different feelings. And I'm not saying these are anything super crazy. They're very traditional landscape photos, but these are just the kinds of things I like to think about. Um, but yeah, here's the full print of that image. Really like how it turned out. Beautiful texture here in the foreground, little boat, bunch of birds, last little bit of light in the sky, and then these really dark blue clouds. I love this kind of light in all of my photos. Very like transitional light. Only happens for a few minutes a day. And it just makes something that looks like this so much more unique. Like let's compare this really quick to this, which is a very similar composition. I mean, not quite, but similar, just a difference of time. Just changes everything. Completely different feeling just based on what time of day you shoot. Love it. After that, you can see it down here. We went to some of the cabins in the neighborhood and cottages and just tried to shoot these while there was still a little bit of blue in the sky. I don't know what it is, but I love just a classic cottage. It's got this nice clothesline here with a bunch of beach towels, kind of lets you know where you are. The blue in the sky is a really nice color, I think, and I think it nicely contrasts the warm light coming from the interior. There's this lamp on right in the window, which I think kind of works, but eh, I don't know. doesn't do much for me. It's a little bit basic. Uh, we woke up the next morning for sunrise and it was okay, but it wasn't anything insane, I guess. We went to these green cottages, which are quite famous in Cape Cod. This red one here, I did make a final print of. Again, it's okay. It's a little bit basic. The clothesline is nice. Back to the contact sheet here, the light was nice, but I've seen better light here before um, when I went in the past and yeah, it was okay. The next contact sheet though is really where I think I was most happy and it was in the most unsuspecting time. Like I really wasn't expecting to take a lot of photos here that I liked, but after sunrise, we just went on a walk around the town that we were staying in and there were so many beautiful little things that I liked that were so summery, so east coast. Maybe it's because I'm nostalgic for that now after living in LA for a year and a half, but just something like these flowers here. And finding these little things on this walk was probably my favorite part of the trip, which it's not like it's not the big landmark and it's not the sort of loud photo of an epic sunset, but it's these kind of subtle things that I enjoy photographing a lot more. Okay, this car shot, let's talk about it because yes, it's a classic car. Yes, it's cliche, but I think something about it worked beyond that cliche maybe, which is this sort of very stark and contrasty color of the light, which it's actually just gray and black, but it creates this beautiful roll off of light and I think the shape of the car window here helps with it too. I don't know, something about this really dark silver that's just getting hit with this 
incredibly contrasty light. Here's another nice example of one of those cottage photos where it's this very small house that has these elements of a big house. I don't know, like this chimney, this window, the American flag. It's got all the features, but it's just so compact and I love that. I think it plays a really interesting trick on the eye. More of this walk here, more flowers, more like subtle little observations of Cape Cod that I think just worked really nice. Now I think for me this was top two favorite photos of the trip. Something about the combination of this wavy bark with the yellow moss growing over it just has this beautiful texture that's really painterly I think. I love this photo because it's so summery. You get the speckled light coming through the trees here. These beautiful looking houses that kind of remind you where you are. I also got very lucky that there's just this nice shadow here in the foreground that's really dark and again up here by the leaves and it just creates this lovely separation. You can't predict this kind of thing either like it's the joy of just walking around and finding this. Yeah it's these kind of pleasant surprises that I really like about photography. On the contact sheet we got a whole lot more flowers. I think on the next one it's practically all just flowers and it's almost like it's there to be photographed. You can look at everything here as a cliche. You know, it's flowers, sunsets, trees, whatever. Everything's a cliche, but it's in the little details and the way you sort of execute it that I think you can move past a cliche. In this one here, I love just the spacing of these. It's half pink, half yellow, lined up against this nice dark background so the flowers are really on display and then in the background is just this nice little lobster just reminding you of where you are and it's almost like this thing that kind of catches you off guard like it's a flower photo but then there's this giant lobster hanging down in the background and it's just kind of a nice surprise element to the photo so now that you've seen all the images what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out some of these frames that I think are interesting and we'll make some sequences out of the images and just try to make sense of them. So here's everything that I thought was kind of interesting. And I should mention, I'm not trying to make a project about Cape Cod. It's not my goal here, but I do think it's fun when you shoot a bunch of photos to try and just put them together like this and I always just think this is a really good exercise because maybe I'll find something that I want to pursue further down the road or you know we could just find some interesting pairings. There's kind of two different groups of photos. There's the ones of like the transitioning light like these guys right here, blue hour, sunset, uh, dusk, whatever, sunrise. And then there's kind of these midday photos like these ones that aren't as much about the light but they're more simple observations of the town itself. So I think there's a couple things we could do here. I think it's fun to sometimes find just like one simple idea like I could just get all the floral photos here. Every picture that has a flower in it could be kind of arranged here and maybe that's interesting. So now we have a set of photos about you know the flowers of Cape Cod. This really isn't doing that much for me though. They're all very pretty. Maybe if I expanded on this and really committed to this for a while it could yield some interesting results but right now uh, very limited, but it's it's a direction I could go in the future if I wanted to. I think the real only interesting way that I can think to sequence the rest of these would be by the light. So maybe we could do, since this was 18 hours, but maybe we could sequence this as kind of like a whole day. So we'll start with a sunrise. I think that's the earliest photo. I can see and maybe that's our house that we're leaving here. 
This is really the very first light. You can see it hasn't even reached the bottom. Maybe this is our house if this really was trying to be a story, which it's not. But let's put these in order of sunrise to sunset to night. And I think that might be the best thing here. Yeah, I like the idea of walking through the town here. Yep. Okay, okay. You're walking through the town. No, let's get a floral one in there. Yep. Okay, this is getting somewhere. Maybe not somewhere interesting, but it's somewhere. I mean, I'm not trying to make this anything that it wasn't, you know? It was a very simple walk through Cape Cod. So maybe that's all that this is going to be. And the sequence is just going to be based around a single day of light. I'm trying to find just a balance between house, flower, detail, flower, tree. You know, trying to make a little bit of a rhythm. You don't want seven houses and then all your flowers, I think. This is funny because this is not something I would actually publish, but it's just fun to, to practice doing this. Let's see, maybe now it's time to go to the water. So you walk out to the water. It's not quite sunny yet. I like the pairing of these two right here. I wish I framed them the same. I obviously didn't know I would pair them as I was shooting these, but the fact that you get this little line of sunshine in both of them and they're shot just a few minutes apart really shows time passing. So maybe these could come next. This beautiful sunset is maybe like the peak of the, the story here. And then you get blue hour and we'll end on another house since we started on one. Nice. That actually worked a lot better than I thought. Again, this is not something I would publish. I'm not trying to make anything about Cape Cod. I just like taking photos there. I think ultimately I would maybe use one or two of these images in like a bigger project about the East Coast or about summertime, or maybe I do a book about flowers one day and something like that ends up in there, or maybe I do a book about cabins one day and that ends up in there, or a book about trees and that ends up in there. I think it came out nice considering this was 18 hours of pictures and there's this nice little end product from it. It's really rewarding to kind of finish the process like this as opposed to just shooting a ton of photos and then leaving them there or just throwing one up on Instagram and calling it a day. This is so much more fulfilling to me, so satisfying. You know, I understand the images a little bit better now than I did before this whole exercise. And I think that's really why I like the darkroom and that's why I like physically working with prints because it's just an excuse to sit there with the photos and really think about them more than just what's the initial reaction. You can really think about what do they mean? What do I want to do with these? I'm also kind of just over gear videos. I know they're a big part of the process. I know that cameras are a big part of photography, but it just doesn't inspire me like it used to. I don't really get excited by a new camera anymore. This to me is much more inspiring, much more exciting. It might not do as well on YouTube and I'm okay with that. I don't really care too much about growing this channel. There is such a nice community here such a cool group of people who are always active in the comments. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. And finally, thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is an incredible all-in-one website building platform that you can use to build your photography portfolio online. I've been using Squarespace for so many years now and they've made it so easy to get a website up and running with my photography. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, you can hit the link in my description for a 14-day free trial of Squarespace. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Willem for 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. I'll see you guys next week with another video. Peace.